This is a beautiful piece of tanzanite rough that is clean and has great color. It is 5.77 carats and measures about 10 by 8 by 6 millimeters. This piece of rough has excellent shape for a variety of potential gem cut designs and unlike most tanzanite, the shape of this rough also lends itself to a round design like a Portuguese, which is one of my favorite designs to cut. This tanzanite has a deep blue and purple, and if I cut it right, it would cut a dream come true tanzanite round Portuguese cut gemstone. Tanzanite is the blue and violet variety of the mineral zoyasite, and the color is caused by small amounts of vanadium. Tanzanite is a relatively newcomer to the gemstone world as it was first discovered in 1967. The story of Tanzanite's discovery is that there were some Maserai herders who found the blue crystals in the Marilini Hills near Arusha in Tanzania while they were tending livestock. The Maasai are an ethnic group inhabiting northern, central, and southern Kenya and northern Tanzania. The only place in the world where Tanzanite has been found so far is in Tanzania, in a very small mining area near the Mariani Hills, thus the name Tanzanite. Tanzanite rough is getting a little bit harder to obtain as the Tanzanian government has recently started cracking down on the gem trade. They currently don't allow Tanzanite rough to be exported out of the country, and I understand they even built a wall around the gem mining area near the Mirani Hills to prevent the rough from being illegally removed from the country. Okay, I don't think the wall around Tanzania deposits look like this, but I don't know. The Marilani Gem Mining Area is an area that's only two kilometers wide and 50 kilometers long. And in American, that's about one and a quarter miles wide by 31 miles long. Now, any way you look at it, it's got to be a very long wall to encircle that area. Tanzanite is also one of the three birthstones for December, along with blue zircon and turquoise. Obviously, Tanzanite wasn't originally a birthstone month since it was only recently discovered. In fact, it was added to the birthstone calendar list in 2002 as the latest addition to the birthstone calendar. Again, Tanzanite hasn't been around all that long, but it has soared in popularity. And currently, it's the number two best-selling colored gemstone, just behind sapphire. On the Mohs hardness scale, which I explained in a previous video and you can see the link, Tanzanite has a hardness of 6 to 6.5, which means that you can't scratch it with a copper penny, you can scratch amber jewelry, for example, as, with a copper penny, as ad, amber only has a hardness of 2 to 2.5, while a copper penny has a hardness of 3.5. You can't scratch tanzanite with your pocket knife, which can scratch apatite and fluorite, but you may be able to scratch tanzanite with a steel nail with a hardness of 6.5. But please, don't try this at home. So, tanzanite is relatively hard on the Mohs scale, just below amethyst, citrine, and other quartzes, which have a hardness of 7. But, tanzanite is brittle, different from hardness. It tends to chip easily when struck. So, if you love tanzanite in jewelry, you just have to be very careful with it. But that color, wow. I want to find the best Portuguese gem design for this tanzanite. 
and I used uh, GCS, Gem Cut Studios, to, and looked through the various Portuguese gem cutting diagrams that are available on the internet to see which design gives the best performance in tanzanite. And it looked to me like Jeff Graham's simple Portuguese design is the best Portuguese design that I have for tanzanite. Now there are about two dozen of gem cutting designs of the late Jeff Graham that are in the public domain. And I showed you how to access all of Jeff's publicly available designs in a previous video. You can cl click this link if you want to see the video and get the designs like the Simple Portuguese. After opening the Simple Portuguese design in the Gem Cut Studio program, I used the manual optimizer feature to see if I could improve on the cutting angles of the design for Tanzanite based on the refractive index. Tanzanite has a refractive index of 1.69 to 1.7. And I made a whole series of tutorials on using Gem Cut Studio. And in, in the interest of time, I won't explain these features in detail here. If you want more information on how to use the manual optimizer feature and the tilt performance features, just refer to those videos. The basic simple Portuguese design gives just over 40% brightness and 20% window. I used the render feature and changed the material in GCS to Tanzanite. The design now gives 45% brightness and 15% window in the face-up position. So if you cut this design as it's written for Tanzanite, that's what you can expect. Now we need to see if we can improve on the performance by tweaking the cutting angles a little bit. GCS has a manual optimizer feature, which helps us to look at the performance and the design based on changing the depth of either the crown or the pavilion and adjusting those depths also adjusts the angles of the cuts. Uh, using the manual optimizer feature, I see that we can improve performance quite a bit by just reducing the angle of the facets on the lower half or the pavilion of our tanzanite. The brightness improves from about 45% to about 55% and windowing is not changed, remaining at 15%. After making the tweak to the angles to improve the performance, the pavilion angles change slightly as you can see. And just so you don't have to make all these adjustments in GCS yourself, here is the change design that I will use to cut this tanzanite. Again, we're just changing the angles on the pavilion by about 3%. Not much of a tweak, but it gives us a much improved performance. No adjustments are being made to the crown angles. And so again, I'll use these tweaked angles to cut this gemstone. Now we're ready to start cutting. Let's see how the final gemstone turns out. I've gone over the tanzanite with a 240 grit topper just to basically put some basic preforming onto it. So this, uh, we're not there yet, but uh, this is pretty much preformed. There's still some issues. I need to bring the pavilion down and make a center point out of this, but I just cut the first row of facets. There's uh, uh, three other rows that'll uh, cut it more, more of an angle and help close that up. So I'm not too worried about that yet, but I'll switch to the 320 grit lap topper now and work on it. There's also a little bit uh, that needs to come out here. Uh, just by bringing, working on it with the, the next set of laps will help clean that up. And I do have some room to work with and still have a girdle. There is an issue, surface issue here that we need to work out. It's going to make the stone a little bit smaller. And I see a surface issue here, but that'll, that'll clean right up as I continue to close up that uh, center point. So we'll go to our 300 series topper and go over this uh, tanzanite again. Okay, I've gone over our tanzanite with the uh, 320 grit topper and we closed up that, uh, uh, that uh, culet here and we now have a, our center point. Uh, I just went over the, only the first two facets. There's still two other facets to go over. And there's still a little bit of cleanup here. Either I have to make stone smaller or bring down the pavilion a little bit to clean that up. 
so the question is, do I have enough rough left on the uh, bottom here, which will be the top part, the crown, or not? So the way you determine that is you go to your instructions and you look for the crown to width ratio, the C slash W ratio, which is 0 0.207. It's given to you in the cutting instructions. Then you measure the width of your stone and in this case it's uh, about 7.7 .7 millimeters. You multiply 7.7 .7 by 0 0.207 and that gives you 1.59 uh, meaning that you need 1.59 millimeters uh, in the crown, but don't forget your girdle. Uh, so it's 1.59 plus your girdle, and I figure maybe a 0.3 for the girdle. So about a 1.9 uh, millimeters is what we need. So uh, you set your kelpers at 1.9, uh, and that's, you measure that gap up against your stone. So now you just measure uh, to see if there is enough. And there's, it's just not, just right at the right amount. So um, that means I can't, I can't clean up this little problem by bringing the pavilion down. I've got to bring the girdles in because uh, if I bring the pavilion down, I'm not going to have enough to properly cut the angles at the crown. I could adjust them, but then I'm not following the diagram and the, and the you know, sparkle and brilliance is going to be affected. So I'll make the stone a little bit smaller, uh, take care of this inclusion, uh, this uh, fracture that's on the surface now, and go from there. So the next uh, lap I'm going to use is my 600 solid steel crystallite. Uh, I was using toppers at the 600 when my last crystallite wore out because I was thinking about buying a sintered lap at the 600 grit level, but in the end I bought another uh, crystallite solid steel lap and, and it works great, so I'll use that uh, to go over the tanzanite. Finished going over the tanzanite with my 600 grit uh, crystallite solid steel lap. And so I've cleaned up all the inclusions, uh, all the fractures, and there's just enough rough left in the bottom half here to cut the upper half or the crown of our stone. So everything's coming along nicely. I've uh, went over the three of the four uh, tiers or rows in the pavilion. There was no point to going over the fourth one. It cuts fast and I'll cut that with another lap. I finished going over the tanzanite with my 12M lap, which is a 1500 grit lap. And now I'll go over it with uh, 3K diamond on a bat lap. And then we'll be ready to polish the bottom half of our stone of the pavilion. I finished pre-polishing our tanzanite with uh, 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap. So. I have a lot of options for polishing tanzanite from uh, talking to the other uh, cutters who have cut a lot of tanzanite. Good news is, although tanzanite is very brittle and chips and, and has issues as a gemstone, polishing it seems to go very well. You can use 50,000 grit diamond on a bat lap, you can use the dark side with diamond, or you can use the dark side with uh, aluminum oxide. You can use the tin lap with aluminum oxide. That seems to work well as well. And uh, uh, the Greenway with aluminum oxide. So I'm going to try uh, the Greenway lap with aluminum oxide, but it's the, the good news about tanzanite, it seems um, from every source that I've talked to, it polishes uh, without issue. So let's uh, keep our fingers crossed and see how this polishes. Okay, I had to uh, stop polishing the uh, tanzanite and go take a step back. And the reason was there were some little chips uh, on some of the facets uh, that bordered the uh, girdle. Because tanzanite is brittle and, and chipping is a problem. So, um, as I was polishing it with my Greenway, they would polish right up 
but I needed to move the facet a little bit to get rid of the, uh, the small chips. And the Greenway with uh, aluminum oxide uh, seems to be doing a great job of polishing the facet, but it's not aggressive enough to move the facet um, to get rid of little chips. So I took a step back and I used the uh, 13,000 grit diamond on the bat lap and went over the facets uh, again. So they're all kind of, it's very well preformed now. All the facets are just where I need them to be. So now I'll go back to the, uh, my Greenway lap with uh, aluminum oxide and, and repolish the uh, pavilion. Finished polishing the tanzanite with the Greenway lap with uh, aluminum oxide. It polished right up, no issues. So now I will transfer the stone in my transfer fixture and, and be ready to cut the upper half for the crown of the stone. I finished pre-polishing the tanzanite with uh, 13,000 grit diamond on a bat lap. And for the pavilion, or the bottom half of the stone, I polished it with the uh, Gearloose's uh, Greenway lap with uh, sur uh, aluminum oxide uh, spray. But I know a lot of people don't have the Greenway, so what I'm going to do on the crown, the upper half here, is I'm going to polish this with uh, 60,000 grit diamond uh, on a bat lap because I'm sure a lot of people, a lot more people have that than the Greenway. And let's see how that, uh, how the diamond grit does in polishing this stone up. All right, I was getting with the bat lap and 60,000 grit diamond, I was getting a little bit of chipping on the edges around the facets. Not on every facet and not a lot but just a little bit, and I'm not sure why. It's probably my technique was not quite right or something. So I switched to the Greenway um, with uh, aluminum oxide spray, and it polished right up, cleaned up the, uh, the chips and everything. So not definitive, of course, just one stone, you know, on this one stone, this one tanzanite, uh, Gearloose's Greenway lap worked better for me than uh, Diamond, but uh, if your experience is different, just let me know in the comments what uh, what you polish or prefer to polish tanzanite with. So now I'll uh, uh, take the stone up off of uh, out of the spindle and set it up to cut the table. Okay, I finished polishing the table of our tanzanite, so now I'll take it out of the. Uh, spindle and soak it in acetone, then we'll weigh it, measure it, and send it off to Bopi. I enjoyed cutting this piece of tanzanite rough, and the final gemstone turned out great in a Portuguese design. It really does sparkle. Overall, this rough cut and polished beautifully. However, I did have one minor issue in polishing this piece of tanzanite using 60K diamond. Um, it caused some chipping at the edges of a couple of facets. Really hard to see, but they were there. I'm not sure why. However, when I switched back to the Greenway lap with aluminum oxide, it polished the tanzanite beautifully with no issues. Please let me know in the comments what you prefer to polish tanzanite with, or if you've ever had issues with 60K diamond in polishing tanzanite. Love to hear from you. And as always, Happy faceting, everyone.